look puzzled. Hey, Shockwave. I'm just waiting for news. Oh. Um, I'm just on the edge of my seat waiting for the new Dark Moon toys. I mean, where's the dreads? Where's Lightfoot? Where's the other ones that I want? I hate to say it, but Dark and Moon came out many years ago. The probability of a new figure or not- DINO! Oh, finally! Hasbro smartened up and gave us the new Autobot characters from Dark the Moon, the third Bay-directed film. Oh, hold up. Oh, this is a third-party toy? Damn, I was hoping Hasbro realized this untapped market of movie characters to give us new toys. Uh, hi, Studio Series. Well, we had enough waiting, and a Takara repaint of Sideways isn't gonna cut it. So, a third-party company called Alien Attack Toys created a representation similar to Mirage, or... Dino. Still a dumb name, all I can think of is the pet from Rock Simpsons. The not Mirage is called Farage, a twist combined with names Ferrari and Mirage. After these long years, we've got the character people wanted, and then forgot. And then forgot why we even wanted it. Does it live up to the hope? Yep, we're taking a look at the box. Simple in the white cardboard, but decorative, with a nice illustration of Farage's face seemingly painted on beautifully in a brush stroke style. Not much going on with the sides, but the back of the box shows the figure, few of the accessories, and an advertisement for the product released after. I like it, but I'm worried I'm gonna spill my coke on it or get my grubby fingerprints all over it. Figure includes a card with an image matching the box art in the same paint stroke style with the back showing stats. Also instructions, which can come in handy more than you think. And a bag of fingers! It's a lot less creepy than you think. Farage transforms into a car that looks like a Ferrari, feels like a Ferrari, smells like a Ferrari, but it's totally not a Ferrari 458 Italia at all. It looks pretty good with the slick and curvy shape. Check this out, rubber wheels. Oh, so underused in toys today and it makes me happy. However, if the toy's not transformed or stuffed correctly, it'll cause drag. You can adjust them if you need because they're on hinges for the transformation. If everything works, it's as smooth as gooey chocolate cheesecake. There's no way of storing the weapons or adding them to the figure. It's good because you don't get the holes all over the place like the mech tech stuff, but the car feels a little plain. I think the blades would make it more exciting, but that's just the kid in me saying, ooh, toy. I'm not a fan of the mirrors molded in plastic. Should have been rubber at the risk of breaking it, especially for the transformation. Speaking of which, there's a few things I need to mention. There's some things in the transformation the instructions doesn't really explain or is easily missed. Watch out for this step, which is weirdly upside down, and follow how the arms and legs are supposed to go. Also, the toes are supposed to move up and this gray hinge bit on the arm is supposed to flip down, something the instructions missed on. Alright, quick little update. There's these little side things on the feet that move and uh, I thought you had to close them up, but if you leave them open, this one slightly and this one uh, about halfway, and then close this back up, the feet have more room to go in and now you don't really have a clearance issue. Yeah. Just be patient with it, there's a lot going on. Especially keep an eye on the back trying to get this bumper in with the toes pushing against it. And this might just be mine, but one of the rear sights does not want to plug fully into the hole. But suddenly in the review, it's fine, of course. Damn damn it. This figure is not packaged in this mode, so you're likely gonna struggle, but when you get it right, it's a sexy mofo. With plenty of molded and painted detail in the back, gotta appreciate and love that like newborn kittens. Yes, you can see the panels inside the windows. At least the back just looks like engine detail. Speaking of which, the windows are are smoky transparent plastic, but the headlights are clear transparent plastic. Damn, son, where'd you find this? The alt mode looks the part, but it's totally not a Ferrari. Totally not. Hush up, you frog face car. A few things are questionable, and if you haven't transformed it right, it's so stuffed that one wrong or slightly off thing can make a difference. Still, this is a fun little solid car. Robot mode. <laughs>
Legend Robot Mode is pretty slick looking. A little scary too, like a red cat giving you the stink eye. I bet you're wondering why the red color? Well that's so bad guys don't see me spill strawberry jam. I commend the work, the detailing and coloring is wonderfully done for a transforming toy minus the kibble on the back, but if you know me, you know that I just don't care. If the front of the figure does its job, it's good enough. I would say great paint work, but I can't. That's not to say the paint apps are bad, far from it, but it's mostly different pieces used for separation. For example, the lower arms with the black and gold hinges, great inner material, and red armor to cover it. It's a good effect. Sadly, because the head is mostly solid red parts, the paint applications feel out of place from the rest of the toy. It's not as sharp, but with eyes like that penetrating your soul, you can get by. Did someone say, Articulation. Ball jointed head, hinge neck, shoulders up, down, tilt side to side, out and in, forward and back, rotation below, double elbow, wrist rotates, <laughs> two joints in the combined fingers, ball jointed thumb, waist rotation, ball jointed hips, rotation below, double hinge knee, ball joint foot, hinge side foot supports, heels and toes move, and I need to catch my breath. Believe it or not, that's not all. These spikes on the back of the legs can be adjusted. Same with these neck things, and the doors, which are supposed to slide into the pegs, but there's too much kibble pushing against it, like a... marriage? That was dumb! So much posing options, it's almost too easy to work with. I almost feel like I'm cheating when a figure has the capability to look this good. Chest may be a little round, but hey, awesome boobums you have there. Wish the feet were tighter, sometimes he falls drunk. Oh, and the legs. The top of these clashes with the backpack, but those are some sexy ass legs. Mmm, I'd like to take them to Disneyland and give them the old goofy if you know what I'm saying. I'm not allowed anywhere near a theme park. If you didn't think he'd come with weapons, won't you be surprised? These blades can attach to the arms, and would you believe he looks better? These weapons have a bit of articulation on the hinged arms connecting it. And the peg has its own joint. Such dedication. Only issue I have is that the peg isn't strong, but with legs like those... <laughs> I got distracted. He also comes with these whips. Mmm, I'm feeling the sexy fever. The ends have a bunch of joints to work with and a wiring that'll go all over the place. Too bad it gets all jumbled up and it's hard to straighten out. Don't remove the peg from the hooks. I made that mistake and now it's hard to keep on. Oopsie poopsie. You can move the great joint to make it look more connected. And man, he's looking fine. Look, Ma. I'm a chillin' up. Now, what's in the bag? Well, you could build articulated fingers from these. Sadly, the instructions do not recommend you using it for the transformation. I don't mind the hands given, they already have more joints than some of the other figures of this size. But if I swap them out, we'll take a look at it right about now. Now for the size. How to- uh, screw it. swapped I can finally show how mature I am. With the three separate points of articulation in each finger and an additional ball joint in the thumb, there's so much you can do. You could rock on, pretend to be Spider-Man, or eat spaghetti with ease because somehow an alien robot with consciousness can be a rough Italian stereotype. The problem I have is that the fingers are so close together and small that it could take a while to fix it in a pose. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty cool, but I still might opt out for the original hands. There's a metal pin you'll have to slide out, but with the included black pin, it's pretty easy to do. Just wish there was some backing to this, like a rubber end so it doesn't stab my thumb! Of course you could use a hard surface, but be careful. And now he can write his letters. My dearest Anne, it has been months since I felt your touch. Yet, my deepest love commits that the yearning to return to your arms has been eternal. Someday soon, I will be yours again. Signed, your hopeful love.
Yeah. The thumbs are annoying as hell. The ball joint is way too weak to hold a good pose. I guess they did this so as you remove the thumb, you don't strip any of the joints, but it doesn't work. Now for the big question. I decided to go rebellious against the instructions, and behold, you can transform the toy properly with the new fingers. They don't get in the way. There's nothing pushing against them. Nothing has really changed. So why did the instructions say it's best not to do this? I guess the reason for the suggestion is that the fingers are pointed forward with nothing tapping them into the vehicle, so if it gets caught in something, fingertips might fly out, though I've had no issue. You can swap out for the black ones and leave the extra pieces in the included bags. Now for the rest of the review, I will switch back to the original hands. Now for the size, so how tall is he? Well, he's smaller than the Voyager or Masterpiece movie Bumblebee, but slightly taller than the modern deluxe. I know some of you have issue with this not being MP scale, but considering most movie figures are in the deluxe or Voyager scale, I prefer it. I guess it's close to hunt for the Septicons Bumblebee, which looks good next to it. So is Alien Attack Farage worth the money? Well, it's about $60, and that's a lot for something Hasbro should have done years ago. However, to spawn this little beauty, I'm glad they didn't. I will say the transformation is the least enjoyable part. I like an interesting transformation, but it's so jam-packed that one wrong move could break it or set something off. This is totally for collectors who feel there's an empty slot, and a repaint of Sideways isn't gonna cut it. I'm having so much fun posing this little guy, and even though the transformation mission isn't fun, it's satisfying to get him in either modes, just like a good job sticker. Yep, totally recommend this to those who are patient, careful, and not some kid having a tantrum for YouTube views or some teenager saying, it's too hard, you do it. If you have the money and you like the film aesthetic, I think you can still get it at ages 3 and up. <laughs> I'm not sponsored, but this is where I got Farage, so I wanted to give them a mention. I'd say this is one sexy man worth looking into, I swear I'm straight. Oh yeah, you're an animal, you're sexy, damn, no, no, okay, maybe, and I'm spent. Starscream is too big, and this deluxe Starscream is too small. What are we going to do about this situation? Behold, it is I, Voyager Starscream. Whoa! Fuck! If you don't know Starscream, then what the fuck is wrong with you? It's freaking Starscream, one of the most popular Decepticons, the second in command, constantly trying to take over Megatron, and also a commander of snakes from what I heard. Starscream is ruthless and won't hesitate to dump his fellow members if trouble is near, taking any shortcut to get to his ultimate goal. Basically, a YouTuber out for money. Here's Starscream in alt mode, but before we start, I'd like to say that this is the version that was sold before the fix. Later versions had a little tab in a joint that'll allow the wings to hold in place. More for robot mode, but I wanted you to know which one I got. With that, Starscream in jet mode is absolutely fucking suck. Really, this is trash. I can't believe they decided to produce this without just making even a few tweaks. Uh, you know, just let's take a look at the pros. The stickers have some interesting outline detail, including some spooky <laughs> easter eggs. Ghost Attack, a reference to his ghostly appearance in Season 3, and D22, which that number was the original Japanese ID number. And I guess the alt mode shape is different to the original, but is that really a positive? Alright. Now let's shred some crap! The legs don't tab flush into the back. It's way too far apart and the legs don't combine well anyway, due to a stupid peg being forced against either side. I do not care for the shape, it's way too lumpy. What was the issue with the original? I don't mind something new like the leader class figure, but at least that was sharp and smooth. This is not that. The stickers. Holy fucking hell! What the garbage were they thinking? This completely ruins its look. Please, look up the Toy Hacks Upgrade Sticker Kit. Actually, I'll just link it in the description, because let me tell you, this, as is, doesn't work. I would be fine with it despite already peeling off the toy, but why silver? If they wanted to do a matching gray, fine, but this looks like shit, and there's no consistency, like a Tetris game of garbage! And look at the underside. Usually I don't care about kibble, but come on! At least try. At least you can attach the null rays, and that's fine, but the feet? Are you even trying? Oh! 
Uh, oh. Need some giant oversized thrusters? Like the Michael Bay films, they go bigger, but that doesn't make it better, just louder. Is it just me, or does the landing gear stick out too far? I guess it needs to be long to line up with the feet, but it doesn't even do that right. If this was my son, I would be disappointed. Alt mode is utter garbage, not worth your time. The stickers have its own pattern that does not float, the tabs don't work, the shaping's a mess. I'm not even sure if they tried. Let's hope the robot mode's better. Starscream in robot mode can be summed up in two words. Slightly better. I still have my issues, but it's not as bad. I will say, I kind of like the idea of making him bulkier. He is second in command of the Decepticons, after all. But it's kind of round, simple, and uninspiring. Makes it feel like those simple Titan toys. Head sculpt's alright. Feels like it needs more. But I like the classic vent ears. And his face feels scummy and slimy. And not growing into puberty slimy, more like Mo from Simpsons slimy. Did someone say articulation? Ball jointed head, dumb neck flap. Shoulders out and in, forward and back, rotation below. Elbow bend, hips out and in, forward and back, rotation below, and knee joint. Speaking of knees, I appreciate the panels covering the side of the legs. Like the school project you failed at, but you did something right to get a nice note from the teacher. I won't lie, it poses fine, especially with the weapons. You've got two null rays that may be short, but at least they get the job done. Basic great colors, but at least they actually attach to the upper arms. You also get these feet pieces for combined mode, with the peg at the bottom and the whole on the side, you can extend the null race to make... <laughs> what? This is ridiculous, dumb, and just a lame excuse to force it into the robot mode. Yet somehow, I freaking love it. It's just the right amount of dumb that doesn't save the toy, but at least makes it interesting. And the round bolt shape helps the aesthetic of it. Oh, you can add the Enigma oh. of Combination. But what's the point except to put it somewhere? You can also add the Prime Masters to this toy, and good god, I love how according to the cards, some of them just add to his sinister personality. Look them up, you can tell they had fun with it. At least the wing stickers are on the back, and there's enough separation of the jet mode to hide the terrible patterns, but the cockpit is... Uh, why is the new movie figure the only recent Starscream to use it for the chest? Speaking of stickers, these new ones aren't great either. Some of them are better, but some of them are still peeling off. The logo on the chest has seen better days. The back is on a joint that doesn't like to stay in place, however you can imitate the Fresh Prince intro. Now this is the story all about how I made the Autobots kneel down and bow, and I'd like to take a moment just sit right there and I'ma tell you how I became the Decepticon heir. You can adjust the wings on a couple joints. So suck it, leader toy! As a power of the Prime's Voyager figure, Starscream follows the trend of Combiner Wars, becoming a torso for a combiner. Because there's no specific combiner, there's no sense in doing a separate video, so let's check it out. While you can put on whatever you want for the limbs, the instructions show the entire wave one like this, so that's how I set it up. You know what's the sad part? As far as this toy goes, this is the best mode he's got. Taking away the fact that this was never in the original toy, or that this likely affected the other two modes, the torso is mostly solid. You can ratchet the arms without flopping around, and the upper legs work fine for the most part. The elbow and the arm might disconnect, but that seems to be the only risk. Something from the chest could move out of place, but if anything, it would change the aesthetic slightly. I only focus on Starscream's articulation as the limbs are just regular schmucks. Head up and down, rotates, hips out and in, and rotation below. Yeah, I forget to mention forward and back. Oh. Don't like the hips on the back? You can hide them away thanks to the panels. And the null race can be added as... 
somewhere to go. I don't think anyone would be surprised about the combiner head with the crown, but it looks fantastic. Pink and gold for the crown, simply molded, but a great nostalgic look back. Also, duck lips, mmm. You can add the combination oh. enigma to this mode if you like, but does anyone actually care? These blocks don't do anything other than, wow, combine stuff. You can swap out for any Prime Master, or you can add a face if that's your fetish. Starscream's feet can be used as Shocking, the feet. And you can add the extra prime armor as heals, which help to get more poses. It's amazing that this is the best mode, but that's kind of sad. The superior mode is one that probably affected the others, and it makes you wonder, what would it be like if he was just a normal figure? However, Decepticon symbol crotch, can you argue with that? As Starscream, this is not a good toy. The alt mode doesn't hold, stickers are terrible, shaping is uninspiring, it's a mess. Robot mode isn't that bad. As a figure, it's okay, but it doesn't do anything exciting or top plenty of other Starscream toys. I'd say get Elite One or Grimlock over this. I'm sure another Voyager Starscream <laughs> will come up, and hopefully they'll take the time to make sure it's worthy to be sold. Because as it stands, this figure is either lying or stupid. I'm ready! I swear if this review is just gonna be rhyming, I'm going to be slightly aggravated. You might get mad from your point of view. No! But to hell with it. Here's a review. You're technically rhyming view with view. You might think Wheelie just wants a hug, but it's a trap! He's an ass nine bug. He premiered in the 86 film voiced by Frank Walker, who voiced Megatron and Prime Soundwave, who's not much of a talker. The original toy was designed by a fool. Just look at this thing. Who thought it'd be cool? The little guy comes back in Titans Returns, but is he better than the previous herd? This dickless Simpson knockoff Lil Fart transforms into a bright orange Cybertronian car. This little guy is built for speed. The shape and design is made to be sleek. It's clearly taken the G1 inspiration, updated for the Generations Titans Return recreation. Something visually that's not okie dokie, the silver pink canopy mixed with the clear smoky. Looking at it, I'm not filled with glee. The difference in colors makes it feel incomplete. But no need to cry like a little bitch. The canopy opens thanks to a hinge. You can fit him with any Prime Master or Titan, and no matter what, your day will surely brighten. You can move this up so there's less of a hassle, and take a look at that. He's staring into your asshole. Thanks to the hole, you can add weapons to the side. The bigger the weapon, the better the joyride. God, how orange is this little bloke? Please keep me from making a political joke. The wheels roll fine, but when it comes to the rear, it moves too much. Get that shit out of here. There's a lack of tabs, wiggle room to be shown, but there's no need to freak and be overblown. Wheelie's alt mode is a surprisingly great incarnation. But with that robot mode, let's start the transformation. credit, look at what they did! Like Netflix's Daredevil before Marvel Sin. A bad reputation following Wheelie. But this guy is good, I can say freely. The head looks great, though kind of a pinhead. And maybe he's not the sharpest tool in the... Ned. I hope you're enjoying my narration as we begin the articulation! Rotating head, joints are on balls, elbows and shoulders, for the arms that's all. Rotating waist, ball jointed hips, knees too, no way you can miss. Now let's take the good and put it on pause, because we can't glance over some possible flaws. You can put him in poses that certainly appeals, but he unfortunately lacks in actual heels. If you move this hip way too much, eventually it'll just pop off as such. As well, the shoulder joint can start popping. For some reason, it's only this side that's often. Some of the joints are as loose as some hoses, but that doesn't stop him from wonderful poses. Just wish he could stand a little easier, like the Alien film with Sigourney Weaver. Something personal I find out of place, but he lacks a smile, unlike Willem Dafoe's face. Meh, that complaint's barely a pebble. I'm loving the hat from Star Wars Rebels. Panels on the arms, yeah, that kinda sucks, but the tiny toes doesn't give any fucks. It's sad that he doesn't come with any weapons, but take another's and it'll give him a presence. Looking at his back seems pretty bare, but he's got so much personality who really cares? Fits right in with the Legends Minibots. Masterpiece 2, I mean, does he not? Even if you don't like it and it's not worth the bucks, it looks way better than the Universe Redux. It's hard to believe this figure looks so nice. 
I'm thinking this review might get some dislikes. Wheelie's here, and here to stay, and I'm glad they made him, made him this way. It's no secret, he's just not the best, but he surely stands against my test. Finally, a wheelie that can bring me great joy, thanks to the lazy eyebrow reviewer for this in convoy. I recommend getting this cool guy in orange. Ha! Try rhyming with orange, you little shit! What do you mean? You spent this whole review rhyming as a joke, but you fucked yourself! Wait... I was rhyming this whole time? <laughs> I didn't even realize. Piss off! I am a warrior, a storm. Mercy is nothing. We are animals fighting for hope which we struggle to believe. I have killed many men and watched the blood drain from their eyes. It means nothing to me but sweet victory. Oh, it's so cute! Continuing after Wave 2 from The Last Night Toy Line, Wave 3 brings more collective characters from the past films and the movie edition but isn't the new film toys called studio series i'm guessing neither movie edition was the original name for studio series and they didn't change it in time or studio series is a cross collector line with takara tomi excluding tiny turbos as the logo seems to be absent here or who cares slug started in age of extinction as part of the dinobot crew led by grimlock he was also in the last night you might remember him for appearing slug transforms into a robot triceratops and uh, uh, I do. Oh. Oh, that's a lot of green. Hope he's feeling well. Man, Slug has seen so many different colors. It's like picking out new paint for the walls. Should I go with Decepticon purple, golden blue, or earth gray and metallic green? Someone needs a sandwich, because he's pretty skinny looking. I get these things are little desk toys, almost fidgety figures, but with a head that wide, you could probably use it to link brain damage to head injuries. He's usually looking down, but if you set him up, that's a good dino. Also, if you open up his face, Alien face hugger. The good news is, if you need a reason to buy it and add it to your collection, remember the mini Dinobots from the fifth film? Yeah, me neither. If you have something to fit, you can add weapons to the legs. It's a bit distracting and the legs are pretty spread out, but I'm pretty sure you can have fun with it. There's little tabs on the legs that goes into the body. I don't know if it needs it. Good for you. Sure, he's pretty alright in dino mode. Simple, but doesn't do anything wrong. And how can you say no to that face? With that, robot mode. <laughs> Slug's robot mode is- Oh no! What happened to your legs? Are you okay? Do you need some water? I think they wanted to cheat and make those spiked feet, but I mean, that just looks like someone took a bat to his knee and he was like, it's whatever. With the adorable round smooth face and the arms that can't go straight down, he just looks like some anime mascot. And with the dino heads on the side, it makes you confused. I don't know whose eyes I'm supposed to look at and I don't want to be rude. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Ball jointed head, ball joint hips, that's it. The tab that holds the tails in alt mode fits into the little gap, so it gets out of the way. It restricts leg movement, but there's only so much you can do either way. This could be just mine, but the hips are a little uneven. He's constantly leaning to the side, and the broken legs aren't helping. But give him credit, we can all be the adorable Genji from Overwatch. Or Meta Knight's American cousin. You can add certain weapons to it, including from Creo and Cyberverse. Paint is so bare that he's looking a little naked. Slug! Think of the children! This is made using no screws and a pretty soft plastic, so I'm not too concerned about it breaking. You know, not old Mega Bloks. Slug is a radical bro. Simple, but very eye-catching. Can't say he's great to look at. I mean, the legs make me want to vomit. That can't be good. And the dino heads stick out pretty far. If you're into it, I'd say there's nothing to hurt here. Safe, cute, and I probably got the wrong toy because I think this is a Clash of Clans character. I'm going to officially lay this argument to rest. This is Rubble, and this is Frenzy. Unless this is Frenzy and this is Rumble, in which case, no, because this is Rumble. Or is it Frenzy? This is Rumble, I'm sure of that, and th this is Frenzy. Now this, 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 
this is definitely Frenzy. This is Rumble. This this is Frenzy. Frenzy Rumble. Rumble. Frenzy Rumble. Rumble. Frenzy. Frenzy Rumble. 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 Barney Rumble. Frenzy. Frenzy. Rumble. Rumble. Frenzy. Rumble. 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 Punch. You're an idiot. Frenzy. Rumble. Rumble. Red rum, red dot, red October, red rum, frenzy, friend, 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 the red witch is back! Frenzy and Rumble are two chaotic minions who work under the orders of Soundwave and spends quite a lot of time in his chest. So is it a fetish thing or... If you don't know, there's a lot of confusion and argument between who's who. Their names have been swapped too many times even in Generation 1. There's probably no solid answer to which is which. I guess twins never really fully know, do they? For the sake of this review, even as a rib for myself, Takara names the blue one Frenzy and the red Rumble, so I'll just go with that. Despite one's plan for a Hasbro release, even with a blue Rumble for the reveal the shield line before cancellation, these Scout class figures were properly released in the Takara Tomi Company. In fact, they've done it twice just for insult. But it's okay, years later we got... just one of them. Frenzy and Rumble are the exact same molds and they transform into miniature drone tanks. Considering there was no sound wave release during the time, kinda glad they're not cassettes, I mean what would be the point? I say drones because of the inescapable soulless eye. My pants are wet with absolute fear. The turret rotates a full 360 degrees if it doesn't get caught, and the mini turret and drone eye move side to side. Main cannon moves from a ball joint, but it's pretty tight. They use a C-clip similar to Revenge of the Fallen Recon Ironhide's weapons, so I don't want them to warp and break. The adorable tanks are torture. I look at them and I just want to play, but there's a drop. These silver panels are part of a gimmick, launching the pile drivers in robot mode. In alt mode, they're just an annoying, sensitive button to watch out for. I mean, itchy fingers. I think the black and red on Rumble works pretty well, but you may notice there's two different shades of black. Is that even possible? I think Frenzy's blue and light blue is better, but again, there's two different shades of dark blue colors for some reason. I think those are the prettiest Decepticon logos I've seen on a toy. With that, the wild trigger happy tanks look great. May not be what the original had, but it works. Robot mode! <laughs> Play the boys are back in town by Thin Lizzy. This is why Alexis is beating you. Frenzy and Rumble look good for the most part. Their head designs work and their chest detailing shows off some G1 love with the holes in the nipples right for the milking. You even get the guns on the back and you can add them to the arms. Oh, what's fun! Speaking of the back, oh. Goodness! Even with the adjustable feet and heels, these two are pretty top-heavy tipsy. But there's a little surprise that's perfectly gift wrap. You could change the arms and remake the Rock'em Sock'em Piledriver modes from Generation 1. Eh? Now who wore it better? Take the red pill, and you'll gain the knowledge the government was trying to keep secret. The fake moon landing, flat earth theory, why you can only find one sock. Take the blue pill and get relief of cold and sinus, but you get the voice of Gilbert Godfrey for a day, so it does nothing. Aside from the molded colors that separate the characters, every paint application is the exact same with the silver, muddy gold, and red on the knees and eyes. Looks better than the Hasbro one, looking back, that's, it, it, it's just gross. Did someone say, oh, thank you, hey, son. Ball jointed head, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow joint, ball jointed hips, ball joint knees, feet forward in the back, and heels move. Speaking of the feet, despite being pretty wide with joints to adjust, he's still easy to fall over mostly due to some weak hips on my fingers. You can use the transformation joint as an ab crunch. Sadly, the shoulders don't lock in as well as I'd hope. These buttons are still too sensitive.
Oh, and don't forget the transformation joint in the lower arm that gets in the way when you want to properly bend the elbow. So yeah, these guys don't amaze me. There's too many nitpicky issues that just pile up. But just like the family member you're not impressed with, you still love them. I'm glad I got friends in Rumble, and for the most part, they're pretty good, but I can't deny they can be a floppy mess when you're either posing it or transforming it. Personally, I don't think you should pay a massive price for these two. They're far from bad, just not what I was hoping for. Still better than minions. One could argue better than Titans Returns? Maybe? And now for the Super Link mode! <laughs> lied about the super link mode and you thought the review was done well we got special guests a big ass fly what do you think smash that bell icon Everyone, I'm back from movie stuff. Whoa, it's superstar legend Finn Wolfhard! Yeah. Ah, so you heard what? Presumably. Ah, these film stars, they always get so arrogant. Weren't you in the film? I assure you, I have no idea what you're talking about. Would you like a certain copy? Well, I'm off to help another family. But will we ever see you again? <laughs> Yeah, you bought me. Seems like it's the year of the Bumblebee. He's taking the lead role in a TV show, the headline of the latest action feature film, and suddenly everyone remembered Jerry Seinfeld. While keeping tabs on the beige cues like the headlights on the chest and head similarities, Bumblebee seems to go closer to his roots with the smaller size, more round shape, and more friendly approach, keeping the respect of the original source we love, rather than, let's give Devastator balls! Now there's not too many major robot characters in the film with the smaller cast, so they threw the mainline toys into the running studio series, a toy line featuring movie characters throughout the years. So how does CB7, NBE2, B127, Bumblebee stand out? In the Studio Series line, each main figure comes with a cardboard insert that can open up and become a display backdrop. In this case, Bumblebee's backdrop shows his film logo and the artwork is that of Charlie's Garage, seen first in the trailer. Bumblebee transforms into a Volkswagen Beetle, the same used in the film, but also similar to his original Generation 1 incarnation. I strongly believe this was a pretty good move on their part, trying to go back to basics over the, let's just make the next film louder. The paint is pretty simple, missing some of the silver outline, but funny enough, they did paint these little lights on top, red lights on the back, and even the windshield wipers, but paint the damn Volkswagen logo. The painted yellow doesn't match the molded plastic, but hands up, who thought it would? Anyone? No one? Speaking of hands, you could totally pull off the scene where Bumblebee's grabbing the rails in car mode. The coloring doesn't bother me, although I feel like it's missing something with the sunshine of yellow. Also, the clear plastic reveals a lot of the interior kibble, but I'm not sure if I'd prefer tinted or painted windows. Would the colors clash or blend with the toy? Would a dark color disrupt its bright style? Doomed if you do, doomed if you don't. Wheels roll fine and are exceptionally detailed with molded gray rims and Volkswagen logo in the center. If only the front ones didn't have these pesky gaps. Ah, oh, shucks. Also, just like the film, you could see his little noggin poking at the bottom. It's a nice inside joke to the collectors of the toys, but is this really an obscure reference or just convenient? <laughs> Weapons can attach, but some of it feels like an afterthought. Gun plugs into his poopy hole, the blade just slips onto the arm, and the mask tabs on the front. Uncomfortable to attach, but now the car has insect sensors that can pick up delicious nectar or something. If you can manage with a painful transformation and tab everything right, the resulting toy is enjoyably fun. It's about time we got a bumblebee anyone can recognize. But is this a wreck in hiding? Robot mode! <laughs> Thank you.
Bumblebee in robot mode, but before we dive into the weapons, sculpting, and whatnot, there's some buyer beware things I'd like to say. There was a clear tab on the back I had to shave off completely. It really wasn't doing anything except be offset from this gap it's supposed to go into. It was just pushing against everything, making it difficult. I also tried to shave down the gray tab to try to fit the backpack in as far as it would go. It really doesn't do a good job, and I'm sure I can get it in further, but it's an even bigger pain to try and get it back out. It's not worth it. If it helps, pushing the head forward can get this panel out of the way, making more room. Also, if you swing the arms down and push the wheel wells in, you'll get a little more room with it too. Even with that, I'm not happy with how they presented this. Not just the fact that you have a chunk of car hanging off the toy, but the clear plastic and forced use makes it concerning. There's already stress marks. Alright, back to my goofy self. See pose. <laughs> the mold work on Bumblebee itself is Pretty fantastic. Love how they twisted the titties and composed it to flow with the toy. And I swear his intestines are made from an engine block. Nice sneakers, dude. Shooting some b-ball? I'm hip. The head sculpt is wonderful. The painted and molded yellow separating the parts is not working for it, but the design evokes the original bait design with a more friendly twist. Also feels more retro with those head side vent things. Red Autobot logo, painted blue eyes, and antennas of enthusiasm are all welcome additions. May not be the original Generation 1 face, but Travis, I applaud you. Did someone say articulation? Ball jointed head, hinge, ball jointed shoulders, rotation below that I'm not gonna bother with because I don't trust it. Elbow bend, waist rotation, ball jointed hips, rotation below, hinge, knee, feet, forward and back, and tilt. Whoa! So you can get some decent enough poses, but everything's better with weapon uh, accessories. Bumblebee comes with an alternative battle mask, provoking a more insect-like face. Pan blue eyes are nice, but it certainly needs more paint to actually stand out rather than become a yellow blob. Alternatively, you can leave both the faces off and not sleep for a week. You could strip them of an arm and replace it with a cannon. It feels oddly small, but I believe that's the point. Didn't think a cannon would be cute, but looky here. Only plugs into one arm with the black attachment, but we won't leave the other one in the dust. He also comes with a blade that attaches to the side of the arm. This is probably the most enjoyable accessory out of them. Just slashing this around after watching 80s ninja films. The silver highlights the detail, but I love how it flows with the arm. You could also attach this to the cannon and have a battle ready arm. Now you can reenact the scene where Bumblebee's taken on. I'm not opening that can of worms. If you have no use for these, there is weapon storage, but I'm gonna warn you, it's Ling. The sword and gun just slap onto the tabs, but I feel like they could have done something different. If you got both of them, they just sort of stick out. You could try to plug the arm in, but mine seems to pop off. The unused face can be added to the window wing, but <laughs> what is this? this is, no. No. Or there's another thing you could do. Throw it away. Yo, know, I don't do this normally, but how is this Oh, uh, Yeah, he's smaller than the average deluxe even in the Studio Series toy line, but I think it works considering originally he was a mini-bot, and in this film, he seems shorter than his previous movie incarnation. This begs the question, is Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Bumblebee, yes, I had to say that specifically, worth getting? To put it to you this way, the robot mode is pretty fun, and the alt mode is also pretty fun, it's the in-between that gets in the way. The mode's issues can be looked past, but the transformation consequences seem to take a toll on the figure to where it's just not as fun as I hope. There's a few stress marks on the windows as is, and doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of this toy? This isn't a hero masher or a statue with a brand of Transformers. This is sold as a Transformers toy with the purpose of a working transformation, and it's just not fun in that fact. And hard to bear, if you don't care about that, I'd say Bumblebee's a good piece, but maybe get an Energon Igniter to make up for the car. Also, door wings? Who cares? And here's hoping for good things with the film. Just don't be the previous movie. Stay far away from that. This is just a normal average day. UNTIL! How's it going? Oh no, the dead has been risen in search of the McRib! I can't let this outbreak continue, I need to defeat the zombie! But how? <laughs> yep, zombie defeated, we just did World War Z in like 10 seconds without any emotion, effort, or drive. So take that, you pile of s***!
Struggling and his twin Skyquake was dedicated to the Decepticon cause, honoring the symbol for the majority of the war he played a part of, up until Starscream returned as commander who played a part in his brother's demise. Dreadwing is nothing short of a bomb expert, a skillful master with a sword, honorable as a warrior, and Genji is blue now. Dreadwing was taken out before the Beast Hunter season began, but if you thought he couldn't crawl his way into the toy line from beyond the grave, You'd be stupid. Dreadwing transforms into, well, let's just say some custom armored jet prepared to fight dragons that transformed into robots. And this series was taken seriously. The shape was pretty odd, but then again, most of the recycled characters was the same in the series, with curvy and spiked shapes and this scaly ripple fit for the Beast Hunter's theme. The coloring is certainly out there, with the sand blue and black swirls, dark blue, hints of purple, yellow, and a dark red cockpit. For something with a lot of colors, it is oddly muted for the most part. The yellow beak-like cockpit and feathery wings almost suggest an an element of a bird theme, which makes more quote-unquote sense in robot mode. Also, the gold honor guard-like Decepticon logos is a nice touch carried over the original. The underneath has the arms and legs right in your face. Doesn't even bother hiding the feet, but I've gotten used to it. You can attach the missiles to the wings, but they don't stay on. One slip and I think I've been cut. Same with the ends of the wings. You slip up, and they can move out of place. There's a landing wheel underneath you can flip out, so if that gets you hard... <laughs> you can attach weapons to the top if you like, or on the side of the arms. You can fold up the landing gear, shove the axe saw thing in the hole on the crotch and attach the gun for some overly complicated stand or a more messed up wang than an echidna. Don't search it out. Check out the wavy details around the cockpit, almost like it's got veins feeding to the windshield. Too bad some of the smaller bits aren't picked out in the paint, including the tiny thruster in the back. Tiny thruster, how does this thing get off the ground? It's funny when claws on the back of a jet is not the first thing I question, but at least he can't catch fish out of the water, so there's something. All mode is a collaboration of things that don't add up with an outlandish paint choice and uneasy design, but somehow feels pretty mild with the more darker colors in the majority of it. I like what you get out of it, but I feel if you're gonna go nuts with these, go nuts and see what happens. Robot mode! <laughs> Robot mode, there's a lot more flair with more colors and the wings of the peacock! However, I'm not sure if it's a great step up. The random yellow, purple, and red are bright in contrast to the sand blue, gray, and dark gray. There's no blend to anything and no consistent contrast to the scheme. By comparison with the Takara Adventure repaint, there's no competition. The red, gold, and metallic paint looks so much better compared to this deco that seems like the people behind it just said, eh, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> the torso looks off to me, with the flat body and center section reaching to high, giving him a massive collar. Seems like he's ready for a Prince dedication concert. The head sculpt is absolutely beautiful, still keeping the show's look, but the sunken gaps with black wash really highlights the details, and the samurai motif gives him an ancient warrior vibe. See, movie drift, this is how you do it. That eyebrow is glorious. It's a turn on. Did I say that out loud? Too bad the gold's a little... It's off from the rest of the toy, needs another layer of paint, and is pretty distracting from the otherwise awesome shape. Did someone say, ARTICULATION? Head rotate, shoulder pads up and down, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, ball joint at hips, rotation below, knee bend, and ball joint foot. You haven't seen peacocking till Dreadwing comes into the class. I guess it's part of the theme to go with the bird-like claws, or maybe it's some decoration and it's just a coincidence, but it's got a nice yellow fade with the top two wings that's sadly not continued with these smaller parts. Do you hear that? Do you hear the voice of Gary Oldman intimidating a panda? Fear it. It'll haunt you. The weapons are sort of odd, but they can be enjoyable, and there's a few options. There's a double battle axe with sawtooth blades, and a gun that's probably based on the show's design, but with that Beast Hunter's edge with curvy jagged armor and a shredded blade. Different, but compared to the Voyager, it's trying, probably. You can attach them to the side of the arms, in the legs, or in the hand. You can also combine them for- Good God, what kind of Frankenstein of horrors is this? Just plugs onto the bottom here, and now you've got something special. And parents were worried about running with scissors. The weapon comes with a missile that sticks out pretty far, but you can fire. It also comes with another missile that you can, uh, uh, can add to the wing? 
Why? Yeah, with these weapons, is anyone getting a G2 Jets vibe? You can store any of the weapons on the back for storage, although this looks weird. Keep an eye on the thumb, though. One of the hands had a stress mark, and I'm worried it'll snap. Dreadwing is pretty decent, and the weapons are unique, but it's not going to replace my current Voyager. The figure itself is a little forgettable, and was the Lux scale a good idea? With the size of Bumblebee and Wheeljack, something's... A little off, can't put my finger on it. I guess that's why he's got the wings, to make himself seem taller and to intimidate bears. You can shorten up the arms for I can't reach the top shelf. Oh, if there's one thing I love is uh, the feet suck. Hey, you see that little spot of purple in the waist? You can hardly see it. I don't know why I had to point it out. Peacock power! Dreadwing is a pretty forgettable figure. After the more accurate, taller Voyager, there's no point to getting it. But I guess it's a cheap alternative to a figure some people might not have. Weapons are cool, heads amazingly detailed, and the wings are just fun to look at. Feet joints aren't great, but aside from that, I don't mind having this figure in my collection. It's just another harmless toy in the bunch, so if you want to pick it up, you're not going to suffer much. Wait, the undead has an axe. It's learning! All right, I'm gonna chunk this man out ah! to raise awareness uh, for Autism Awareness Month. Help me! members, this explains why my lunch money's gone, the gang's all here. Wreaking havoc and bad for the environment, the Stunicons is a ragtag team of Decepticons who dog the bounty hunter still can't catch. Even under the rule of Megatron, they cannot be contained, but their lust to rule the roads is a perfect weapon for the side. Before we look at the combiner, let's sum up the Decepticon X double as one. Speed and chaos is their words, and they spread it with a fiery passion. Even with Blackjack added to the mix and Off-Road replacing Wild Rider, you can see the unity and the dysfunction of this family. Hell, Off-Road probably makes him more dangerous, crushing and bruising things as he please. Each character is carrying a different color scheme and shape, stands out in their own way, but Motormaster as a semi-truck? I don't know if it screams speed, but it sure as hell says <laughs> Only one of the Universal Commander attachments feels slapped on. The others use some sort of unique way to plug it in. I think Breakdown's my favorite. All weapons can be added, but aside from Blackjack, you can tell most of them are just throw-ins. At least Off-Road becomes a freaking tank! Get ready to tear up the streets with the menacing mayhem of vehicular bot slaughter! But do they fare in robots? Mode. This is the gang you don't want to mess with. Each Decepticon either looks dangerously crazy, dangerously brooding, or just simply dangerous. Each with their own unique style fit for their personality. The thoughtful Blackjack, the in it to win it drag strip, the paranoid breakdown, the super depressed dead end, the mischievous off road, the king motormaster, the vicious killer croc that. Uh, oh. Each deluxe is just a bomb ready to go off, one way or another, and with their traits, it's gotta be hard to contain them. Then Motormaster steps in and says, No McDonald's apple pie if you act like dicks. The masters of chaos. Don't cause accidents, they make them. Sadly, each one carries something that I find pretty annoying. The knees on drag strip, the pegs for dead end, hips on breakdown, just to name a few. It just doesn't seem like they're up to their full potential, but hey, it's the Stunicons. Being pristine isn't their thing. But what will their earth-shattering quirks create once they combine their forces into one mind? There's a name for that. Let's take a look at Menasaur. <laughs> of truth, Menasaur, formed by five, uh, six Stunicons, and man, it's meh. I mean, you could definitely tell this is Menasaur and his personality's still there. He's not all bad, but out of all the combiners I've got, he's the weakest. Let's just... 
Uh, oh boy, where do I even begin? Blackjack can't hold for shit. There's a bunch of fan modes he could try, but... Uh, here's an idea. Take him out, close the chest in there. Uh, what? There's nothing wrong. Nothing. Nothing's changed. What are you talking about? I believe they designed this so you don't need the Legends toy. Thanks shit. The hips are terrible. Loose forward and back joints, even with the ratchets. And the outward movement is out of line. I noticed this is fixed on both Optimus Prime remolds, but for some reason you can either have the legs scrape against each other or wide and droopy. Apparently there's a revision wave with Moan Master and some fixed hips. Well, okay. Hey, if you flip up this little piece... <laughs> Did someone say, ARTICULATION?! Ball jointed head, hinge forward in the back, shoulders out and in forward in the back, rotation below, double elbow, wrist rotation, thumb forward in the back, fingers, waist flat moves, waist rotation, hips out and in forward in the back, knee bends, rotation below, feet rotates, front of the foot moves, and heel adjusts. Motor Master's weapons combine to form a pretty kick-ass rigid sword that looks good on smaller figures, but on a metal sword it looks like an oversized butter knife. It's far from bad, and you can fan mode a gun out of it. If only drag strip can keep the fist in. You can also use blackjack as a smashing weapon. Not sure if he's a fan. Ooh, but the horns aren't straight. I don't care. Look at the face. It's sculpted well and a bit haunting. The face is the stuff of nightmares. You know what? If you're interested, do me a favor and look up all the fan alterations. You could possibly improve Metasaur depending on your preference, not to mention the third-party add-on kits. You can open up these back flaps and hide the ports on the top using the panels. Or, you know, slap it. These shoulders could fucking lick my shit. These shoulders rely on tiny tabs and the fucking balls and... Frustrating, go to hell. Man, those birthing hips. I shouldn't body shame, but hot cinnamon bun. You could throw in the weapons wherever you want. There's no bad answers. It won't be on the test. Compared to Superion, he's actually slightly taller, so points for that. But the gap in the neck? Where's the throat? The fuck? If you open up the chest, you get some sweet nip action. I think I'm fishing for jokes. You could do this. Yeah, but So is Menasaur the one to pick up? I think separately, despite many faults, they're more fun as the boy band bastard covering more ground, just shooting the shit and winging it. The unpredictable Menasaur is good by embracing what Menasaur was, but he's certainly the weakest or one of the weakest combiner figures. I don't blame anyone for passing on it, but he looks so good next to Superion. I guess when it comes down to it, I bought it for the character, and putting up with the flaws, I still end up liking the guy. It was an early Combiner Wars figure, and at least they fixed many of the issues in later toys. Thanks to everyone who participated in the Autism Awareness Month special. It's an important cause for me and it means so much, so thank you guys for watching and Mensor has no ass cheeks. I don't know why I feel the need to mention that, it's weird. It's the holiday season, a time where Hallmark is the happiest company around, and you have to put up with people you probably like. What better way to celebrate that than with Starscream? You might remember him from failing Megatron by unfreezing him into the Bayverse. But is this figure naughty, or just playing nice? Does it know if you're sleeping? Does it know if you're awake? Doesn't know if you've been bad or good. God have mercy be good. Bumblebee's been getting the spotlight, but Starscream has had a pretty good time as well. He's had a decent amount of figures, some good, some power of the primes. We thought he was in the Bumblebee film, then it turns out it wasn't him, but he was in the film anyways. It's interesting. Starscream's impactful presence in the cartoon gained him assurance of a role in the live action films, and suddenly everyone's favorite seeker has become an overly complex kite. Okay, I still find the design intriguing and unique, even in the Bay films. With the studio's series line bringing back characters with new toys based on the movies, Starscream came right out of the gate in the first wave. But is it any good? Like all the main studio series figures, Starscream comes with a backdrop showing the final showdown of the original movie. Looks really good with robot mode, but with alt mode it proves difficult. Awesome to recreate the scene even with Ratchet and Ironhide into the mix. He can take on the Autobots, fly off, and disappear for some time. It seems the teleporter has gone wrong. Starscream transforms into an F-22 Raptor jet similar to the one used in the film and man this jet is 
just so sexy. I mean, the curves on this thing is gorgeous, but remember, it's the heart that counts. Aside from the panel line, Starscream's detail work is intriguing. You'll come across some forgotten detail that'll keep your attention and fascination. Love the lighter gray trim in the wings, and the mild brown and blue hues mixed around creates a nice effect. Wish they could paint the thrusters, but at least he has them, unlike some toys. I'm happy they went with the first movie color scheme over the tattooed version right away. It's a pretty good start, and we already have a pretty good amount of striped Starscreams. They did eventually do the Revenge of the Fallen version, but meh. While the jet has a nice flow, the bottom has tons of kibble that... I swear, I've seen this before. It's also got six peg holes, so go ahead, seize them up! Landing gear can flip out from three places. One in the front, two in the back. And you can place the missile launchers underneath, but... Uh, oh well, I'm sure we've seen worse. There's no competition. The classic toy feels like a clunky mess compared to this. I mean, I still like the original Voyager as a toy and a friend, but I love this like Netflix love friends. Yikes. There's a nice size to it, love the orange cockpit, and tampos include the not-so-honor guard Decepticon logo. If you don't slap the top wings out of place, there's something satisfying about swooshing this around. And it gets better when you bring out the arms. Actually, that's kind of creepy. Jet mode is a nice recreation of the on-screen look. It feels like the perfect size and it's great to look at but how's the robot mode Here's Voyager Starscream, and damn, what a good looking figure, but he just feels so familiar. Oh yeah, they rejanged themselves! Let me tell you, I love the leader figure from Hunk for the Decepticon. Still great to this day, but way too big for my taste. Then the deluxe Dark of the Moon toy came out, which was great too, but way too small. I just wanted a bigger version of this, and look! There it is. But there's a little more to it than that. They added pieces into the chest to flatten it up. Something I didn't like of the original toy. Seems like he's much wider too. And they got rid of the brown. Who thought that was a good idea? I love the coloring with the gunmetal and gold being added to the mix. With the duller gray colors, you think it wouldn't flow or just be blobby, but I think they added it to the right parts and managed it well. Head sculpt's pretty good if you're into that. I wish there was a bit more paint, but they did a decent job. I do like the eyes in red and shape that's... Maybe bird-like? It's definitely weird, I'll give it that. Did someone say, articulation? Head rotates, tilts, shoulders up and down, forward and back, another up and down, rotation below, bend joint, elbow bend, ball joint wrist, hips out and in, forward to back, knee bend, rotation below, and another bend. Very good articulation with this guy, though I wish the torso was given something, like the chest twist of the leader toy. It's still pretty fun, but there's more to it. Starscream comes with a rocket launcher with blades sticking out, because if the knife doesn't get him, the rocket sure will. You can plug that to the side of the arm, or do it the right way, fold up the hand and tap it to the arm. Yeah, the hand's completely bent to the side, but otherwise it does flow with the arm. Such a small piece, but adds so much more. You can tap it to the back for storage, put it on the wing on top, or in the armpit to outthink your enemy. Now, you might be upset he's a rehash of the Deluxe, but this is exactly what I wanted. The Deluxe was cool for its time. Hell, one could argue it's still a good smaller toy to mess with, but the size works for me, and the updates are completely justified. There's also a good heft. He just seems to spread out. Something his weight mate seems to have missed out on. But yeah, why is movie Starscream the only Starscream in a while to actually use the cockpit as the chest? Although I can't ignore that beautiful thigh gap. This toy is nothing new, but feels like a brand new figure by fixing a lot of the quirks. Everything great about his inspired predecessor returns with glory to become the almost perfect Starscream. If you have the chance and like this design, I'd say pick him up when you can. The transformation might be a hassle, a lot of it you have to do in a certain order, but the result is worth it. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the review. You know, I I'm glad that with all our differences, and uh, all the, the, the bad stuff and the good stuff, we can all come together this time around to see one thing. A Christmas tree come to life! <laughs> What's that Christmas tree? <laughs> you have a thirst for blood? Oh no! Oh my! I'm being attacked by a Christmas- Oh god, oh, this is not what I had in mind. Oh, uh, just- uh, no, stop, no. <laughs> Alright, Christmas tree, you think you can take me on, but what you don't realize is- Happy we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The tidings we bring to you. Are you 
an edgy teenager who thinks Kingdom Hearts has complex writing? Are dark alternative OCs of characters your thing? Listening to Evanescence on full blast. Turn down that ruckus! Nemesis Prime is the perfect gift for you, just make sure you have a keyblade. This unnatural entity didn't really take off until Transformers Armada and was introduced as a monster taking the form of the Autobot leader, even sharing his strengths with the bonus of being able to rebuild himself and scare the pajibas out of me. While he was only in one episode at the time, the idea of a dark opposite to Optimus and his sheer power gained him a popular following, with many Takara repaints and a few from Hasbro following the footsteps. Power of the Primes was also given the treatment with an Amazon exclusive Pack and introduced the idea of a dark version of Optimus Prime's past self as Nemesis Pax. With all this and more, is it too much, or can he pull himself together? Nemesis Prime transforms into a semi-rig. Well, actually, Nemesis Pax is the truck, and the trailer is the Evolution Prime setup. This beast is completely decked out in black, with a G1-themed sticker running the side of the trailer in silver and teal. Red transparent and painted windows on the front, silver highlights, and teal for the cab. The overall aesthetic of the mold really isn't consistent and clean, but thanks to the dark deco, it seems to hide a lot of the blemishes. But take a closer inspection and you'll find the arms resting there, joints, and aggressive panel lining. A part of me accepts it considering there's so much going on, but is that a good excuse? I'm not a toy designer, but I feel they could have fixed this. Oh well, good enough, let's ship it. You can detach the trailer from the mm, head, and yeah, starting to really pick out the imperfections. I guess it's close enough to a truck, but those heels... Did you even try? The cab seems pretty small, but hello, trailer! And the smokestacks are tiny. I'm sorry, Studio Series Optimus Prime, you're forgiven. Now, Nemesis Prime is slightly more expensive than the average leader figure of its time, which I expected being an Amazon exclusive. But they made up for it with a couple of swords and guns. Open up the sides and you can plug the guns here Magnus style. You'll get a huge gap on the side, but that cab though. There's no tab so they just swing open, and there's no flow but with bulky weapons like those, who cares, just have fun. The swords can combine and attach to the top, feel slapped on, but... Welcome to Transformers. The rifle, carried over from the original deco, attaches between the arms. We'll come back to it later. Don't turn that remote! If you value your hands, don't fucking turn that goddamn remote! You could also stand the Prime Master on the trailer, but that seems a little dangerous. Not because of safety concerns, but because of riding a demonic robot alien truck. Alt mode isn't perfect, but if you feel it gets the job done, then you shouldn't be too worried about it. Just wish they did more. Robot mode! is an accidental child of Power of the Primes, Optimus Prime, and Hasbro's need for money. It's an interesting concept that landed on our doorstep that I hope they continue down the road. Though I'm guessing a demonic opposite to a librarian is just balls to the wall loud as fuck. Ah! The head seems to be a chunky version of Optimus Prime, and while I think I'd prefer something closer to the Orion Pack's base, it wins an edgy teen mohawk made of raptor claws. I don't care for the head rotation. It's too tight, and considering the joint it's on, it could break. Good news is you can leave it straight in each mode. Did someone and say, articulation! <laughs> Head rotates, ball joint shoulders, double elbow, ball joint hips, knee bend, and feet! Oh, the feet! They're just on a pin and there's no appropriate stopping point to keep it straight, so if you shift his weight forward, he cripples. While I appreciate the covers for the ball joints moving separately from the leg, it can take on to the leg itself and put it to a halt. I don't think it will break, I'm just starting an awareness campaign. This might be mine, but these back titties don't like to stay in place. They flap in the wind, so I might have to fix it. But where are the weapons? Well, it's hiding on the top of the trailer. If you call it hiding. It's tricky to open and a little more work than I want. You'll probably have to pop off these side panels, but when you get it out, split it in half, and you have two legitimate blasters. Might be a little chunky looking and short, but they work perfectly fine on their own as he dual wields them. But if you're not into that, you can use any of the swords, and these blasters won't work. Oh. The color scheme is great with that teal, silver, and trans red branching out while still keeping an unlike cosmetic design. And while the feet suck edgy dick, the goblin prime face and compelling concept is really intriguing. But the fun doesn't stop there. It's Nemesis Prime, not just Pax, for a reason.
prime armor engulfs the block of Nemesis packs to fill the empty void within his chest. I'm jealous. And locks itself into place. Keep in mind, there's a black tab in the back that you'll have to push down to unlock. Though, I will admit, without it, it's probably more amusing than it should be. Like those carnival cutouts you put your face in. Make sure you flip up the peg, or the tooth fairy's gonna kick your shit in. In the typical fashion, Nemesis Prime's deco remains continuous through the years, with black as the main color, teal and gunmetal accents, and transparent red for the windows. It's good, but it's missing something. Weapon additions aside, the core figure feels like it's lacking something, and I think there's just too much black. Now that's a good thing in a way because those absurd panels tuck away in the shadows. I mean, Nemesis Prime has kind of become a tradition. I don't know how it'll be with the Takara Hasbro mishmash, but nearly every Prime toy has had a black deco. Waiting for MP44's turn. But this needs a bit more teal or silver. Not a lot so it doesn't take away from the dark concept, but it's taken back from the rest of the pack. Samurai Jack. Again, much like the Pax figure, his head mold has changed over to a new design, but not as new as you probably think. This sculpt matches that of the TFCC Toxitron from the Combiner Wars mold. It's like the Decepticon logo plowed Optimus Prime in the face to make this. And for some reason, he feels unsettlingly joyous. I think he's going to say the F word. Did someone say articulation? Ball jointed head, shoulders out and in, forward and back, rotation below, elbow bend, hips out and in, forward and back, rotation below, knee bend, foot forward and back, and tilt side to side. With the exception of the loose in and out hip joints and feet that should have locked into place, most of the joints are pretty solid. You can flip up the shoulder panel and raise the arms to terrorize bears. I don't like how everything shifts when you move the arms. I feel like the panels could break. Ah. And even though his thighs are hollow, most of everything else is pretty well covered. Yes, the kibble covering the gaps on the arms count. He feels pretty solid for the most part, aside from the torso panels that can lock out of place. He feels pretty thick. Maybe that has something to do with the guy's legs on the back. Considering everything going on here, I'll let it slide. It can't be perfect with an evolution gimmick like this, and I generally like the concept as long as it works. Aside from the obvious, his design cues are based off the masterpiece toy. The second one, if you're confused. You can open up the chest and continue to open the secondary chest and try to get your sausage fingers inside to pull out the Matrix. Ah, it's just better to pop out the little guy and grab it from here. It's someone's turn on the Xbox. The Matrix is a neat idea with a black holder, purple frame, and trans red core. You can remove this and replace it with any of the Prime Masters and a majority of the Titans Returns head. It may be stupid, but dare to be stupid. Aside from this, Nemesis Prime comes with a hefty amount of accessories. His two smaller blasters combine to form the traditional ion blaster carried over from the original mold. It's pretty good, but let's add it to Pax's hand for storage as we take a look at the bonus weaponry that's exclusive to the set. Two giant blasters that can plug into the side of the arm, suggesting a nice nod to the original Armada figure, the very first version of Nemesis Prime. Scourge don't count! Somebody's been eating his spinach. If you don't get the joke, that's sad. He also comes with two swords, a nice dark saber with a gunmetal hilt and red blade that I'm sure somebody will use for Grimlock or Volcanicus, and another sword that's ANOTHER CHARACTER? Transform it and introduce yourself to Decepticon Giza. I feel like I just opened up a dark portal just saying that. Another nod to a previous Nemesis Prime figure, specifically the Arms Micron from the Takara Prime toy. There's not much going on for articulation, and while it's not a significant part of the toy, I gotta say that his sharp long wings is something to behold. You can attach the dark saber to his legs and... This is terrifying. Could you imagine if birds could wield swords? I think we'd be afraid to go outside. Both blades look cool, and with all these accessories, it's nice to get, but I'm not sure if it really fits him. I mean, Armand suggests he could probably morph a bit from the Optimus base, but I don't think he's one to accessorize. Just wish they could fix the damn feet, because you can hear it. Oh, whoa! Are those stickers? Dude! Fuck off! I really enjoy having Nemesis Prime in my collection, and while the dark color really hides some visual distaste of the original, he just doesn't pop as much as I hope for. It's weird too because the weapons do the opposite and make him look too busy. I think he just needs a little more teal or gunmetal gray. Not a lot that steps away from the core idea, but just enough to show up so he doesn't get run over crossing the street at dark. There's a lot of tiny detail just screaming for help that I feel there would be no harm in touching up. Otherwise, he's an alright toy. If you've got the Optimus Prime and like it, you get a little more out of this. If you're not interested, it's not like you need it, but if you have had no luck in getting a twisted version of our hero, then maybe this is for you. It all depends on what you want. And hey, Prime Lives Matter.
Hey Megatron, you've been going to the gym? You're looking a little burly. Oh! I'm cool, but you're fat. Talk about a metal gene gray. Megatron has died and come back to life so often in the film franchise. That's not including his constant redesigns between each film. This one is based on the Revenge of the Fallen film, where Megatron was revived and rebuilt thanks to the loyal Constructicon members. It's funny, I remember people screaming that he should have been Galvatron, but then we got Galvatron, and we realized... Go back to Megatron. Well, how does this version stand up? Just like all the other Studio Series main figures, Megatron comes with a cardboard backdrop that can open up for display. Showing the forest scene from Revenge of the Fallen looks good, and you can play Where's Waldo but with Sam. Megatron needs no introduction, but the leader of the Decepticons needs something with a little power. He transforms into Metal Vomit, or maybe a Cybertronian tank. Oh uh, yeah, Cybertronian tank. Throughout the mash of gray pieces, you can spot some interesting detail. There's thrusters all around, allowing the tank to jet at high speeds. But also, be a jet. I'm sketchy on this. To the credit of the alt mode, at least they can hold back on making it absolutely perfect. Although the fingers are just there, the robot kibble tends to blend with the toy, but they did a better job than the leader. There's a main cannon on the front in gunmetal, and two additional turrets that can move up and down. Treads look like they could shred up anything, but nothing's more terrifying than the ugly mug staring at you with the red beady eyes. If you like the look, that's fine. However, I have trouble rolling it around. No matter what, I can never get the wheels to touch properly, so he ends up scraping somewhere. I'm not even sure if I managed all the tabs correctly, but I'm not sure what else there is. Megatron's tank may look like Metal Shop art of a turtle infused with a tank, but give it a decent look through, and you'll spot some pretty impressive molding throughout the figure, especially in the treads with all the gearing, and canon that looks like a claw machine from an arcade. It's good for what it's given and probably has more work to it than expected. You just need to sit there and really take it in. Tab everything correctly, and you should have little issue. But with that, how is the robot mode? Megatron in robot mode is a beefy hunk of a robot. Oh, look at that chunky man. He sure eats his cows. Weird skinny arm with creepy fingers, unnatural in motion. But other than that, mm, that's big. He can be huge all he wants, but he needs a good coat of silver. This dull gray doesn't bother me so much in person, but there's a reason there's plenty of custom repaints. That head sculpt is a big. Pretty far from the original Generation 1 core, but if you look close enough, his forehead kind of has the shape. Hey. It's still impressive and scary with the spiky teeth, sharp eyes, and cheeks that I'm sure will probably pinch you back. From any angle, it does portray some pretty good emotion, plenty of free range, and the joint underneath remains untapped so you can lift up and man, that looks silly. <laughs> Did someone say, are you like that? Ball jointed head, shoulders out and in, forward to back, rotation below, elbow bend, these fingers move from two joints, there's a small one right here, still creepy, hips out and in, forward to back, rotation below, knee joint, another joint, and foot tilt. The fun doesn't stop here, let's take a look at the accessories. There are none. He doesn't even have weapon peg holes, but he's not defenseless. I can tell you I wrote this late at night because the script says, he can't even doesn't even... Why? I... Uh, why? I... Nah, uh. There's a couple of turrets that can move forward and back, and not to mention his big <laughs> massive cannon. Looks pretty good aiming it, but with the sword flipped out... Oh god, this... This is just scary. Massively overcompensating for something, Megatron? I doubt it's those fingers. Can't be the jet boosters either. Enjoy your flight pack. It's action! Eyes, nose, mouth. <laughs> He's not without issues. I don't know what it is about the feet, but I can't seem to get them flat. There's a great bit that either rounds off the foot or pushes one of the toes out of place. The tilt really helps. He's got panels on the back of the legs that you need to watch out for. They pop out pretty easily, and other than mine with the defect of a loose leg, I can't stand everything else. He's pretty beefy and tall for a Voyager. Probably helps they have no guts so they can use the plastic to intensify the beef. With that, you can still make him taller by extending out the legs. Might be too large for Optimus and goofy, but hey, stilts are cool. I'm not gonna overlook the fact that 
it's hollow. From the side, it's amazingly distracting. But if you turn it, it's fixed! Order now! I didn't really care for his design when the film released. He just looked like a big mindless ogre on a tantrum. But with this, I can say I'm liking it more. The toy cleans off and improves the look over the older toys. If you can set aside the flaws and creepy fingers, then this hulking guy isn't that bad. I know figures are getting pricier, but the fact that he feels a little bigger than the average Voyager even matching with the leaders makes the price a little more better. Yeah, Tread Toes is pretty decent. I really wasn't expecting much, but I'm pretty happy with the toy. Just please, clip your fingernails. That's disgusting. not my master. I only serve Mr. Cannibal Thor's dad. But that doesn't mean you can't do the thing. I'd rather not. Pretty please. Yeah, fine. So am I starting on? Red Robins! Yum! Cogman, voiced by Jim Carter, started off in Transformers The Last Night, one of the only things I was actually probably okay. Cogman was mentioned as a headmaster, but due to production changes, he never actually was. He served under the Whitwickens' remaining relative, Sir Edmund Burton. I think Cogman planned the idea for Hopkins to eat people. He's a psychopath. What is the fish really made of? Cogman transforms into the hold the fucking phone. What is this? Nitro broke me with the Time Master gimmick, and here comes c 3 p 9 jumping the TNT make gun. This is actually the Cogman based on the movie, and the deluxe is more of a bonus. Cogman was supposed to do this, but they kind out of the film! Headmaster. STOP TOUCHING! Cogman's a basic Titan Master design with the face similar to his on-screen version. I wish the details was picked out on the head like the arms. He just looks like he's wearing shirtless sleeves. The bottom legs are painted in silver, but it's not helping that much. The head mode really shines with the dark metallic wash, gold details, and eyes painted in blue. The back of the head may be off, but I can't deny that the mold is interesting. Too bad the gold's a bit sloppy, but I'm not complaining. You can plug it onto Nitro, but I noticed the connection is, well... I can eat shit! I think he stole Bond's car. The major figure transforms into an Aston Martin DB11, and holy dog farts, this is gorgeous! But is that because of the toy, or because Aston Martins are pretty little fuckos? The main color is a pearly plastic silver that fits just fine. It's not as bad as Dark of the Moon Swiper. Black and gray for the roof, clear windows, clear headlights, black on the front, sides, and back with- Oh, I think I need to sit down. Painted lights on the back? Good golly, Miss Molly, the trolley's full of dollies. Much appreciation for the wheels. Not only did they paint the spike silver, but they left the center unpainted, and I think that's clever. Weapon storage at the bottom, but the back looks like it's having a little gerbil shit. Is there treasure inside? Well, no, you stupid piece of crap. You can let the Titan Master drive himself like a little baby driver. And you can add a passenger. Love it. Oh, and oddly enough, there's a huge gap you can store actual space in. Would you mind driving me to the airport? Such a great old mode, I'm in love with this vehicle, but can the robot mode keep up? mode there's plenty of molded detail i mean if you don't like the bayverse i get it but if the dark wash doesn't help your erectile dysfunction nothing will the wash really helps those gears and bits stand out and when you flip up the chest it's like looking into the face of beauty sadly the wash seems to be spaced out rather than consistent most of the arms and upper legs doesn't continue this and i have no idea why i'm happy to say that it doesn't ruin the figure but i can't deny that they should have continued the deco did someone say moving joints Ball jointed head, hinge shoulders in the torso, ball joint shoulders, shoulder pads move, rotation below, elbow joint, ball joint hips, rotation below, hinge knee, and some movement in the foot. I guess when Kay dumped Excalibur like a pile of dung, Cogman took it and claimed no backseas. The mold is basically simple, but as a throw-in, it's not bad. You can fold down the hands and do this thing.
because it's possible. You can adjust the shoulders if you like. I've seen them sprayed out like this, but I prefer them down myself. While the front of this looks fine, sacrifices had to be made. I'm talking about the landscape of kibble. Oh, why? Oh, no, why? All right, look out for. Oh no, where's the sensor bar when you need it? If there's one thing I have to pick apart, it's the feet. There's something about the heels that makes Cogman a drunken psychopath. I'll admit, this toy is a pretty little shit. Not flawless one bit, but I'm pretty satisfied with this mostly solid figure. Tight Master gimmick is fun, and he's actually one of my favorite movie figures released for the year that I've so far got my hands on. Too bad he seems to be having a limited release due to the fact that he's a sole figure in the last wave. If you find him, don't miss the opportunity to get him. As a toy, he's fun, and I mean robot butler, my good compadre, I'd say top-notch woke, yo! Thank <laughs> you.